I think those people who have been attending our meetings do know about the other uh, cities where Face Me has uh, is doing uh, very good work. Uh, I would like to bring that to everybody who is here today. Uh, so, all in their presence, we would like to uh, uh, extend our welcome to the other zonal uh, leaders uh, present here: uh, Saraswati from uh, Bombay, uh, Ritu from Shanti Delhi. Uh, from Kolkata, Debanjana, from Shakti, si face me. And uh, we uh, in Bangalore are called Maitri. You all know us. So uh, welcome to everyone from all parts of India. And I think we have a few people who have joined in from other countries also. So welcome, everyone. And uh, I would like to uh, say a special mention about a new member in Maitri, Mr. Sumit. Uh, thank you for joining our group. Uh, and without wasting much mo uh, any more of our time, I would like to pass on uh, the mic to Dr. Nirmala Srinivasan to talk about uh, today's topic. Thank you, Sindhuja. So you already given a good introduction about Trace Me and the, just a bit more is uh, for the benefit of some new people who are joined here. It's a family advocacy group. So most important, across India, depending on wherever the families are stronger and have a group, the zonal group, we work with the governments to get actual benefits and results. We try to initiate, we have our own model of advocacy and uh, using that model, uh, it has been so far proved to be successful, but it's a very dynamic one because we are working with government, which means the the the, the whole experience and uh, can differ from state to state. So, but most important thing across India, what is most important is the results that we the the projects that we are working with are core projects for the benefit of the PMIs and the families within the framework of the rights under the Mental Health Care Act and the Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act. Currently, across India, we're working on the ambulance project, free ambulance services. We are also working on trying to get doorstep delivery of psychiatric services, considering the especially urban model. Ours is an urban model and specifically focused on middle class. Probably it's a unique experiment, but it's so far successful. And the government is also very keen to have to have their own uh, uh, pro going beyond the rural aspects of mental health because urbanization is a reality in India today. So urban model of doorstep delivery of psychiatric services, urban city-based ambulance, free ambulance services, and probably long-term care models, whatever is possible, which are enshrined in the laws of the land, we strive our best to achieve that. That This is the basic quintessential characteristic of our uh, Face Me Family Advocacy Group. And when we say family, it is inclusive of the PMIs also. So without wasting my time, I welcome today's speaker, Dr. Virpaksha, and also the other participants in the group. We have two parts to the today's uh, title, the first topic rather. The first half is well-known, CMDs and what are CMDs and what is the difference between CMDs and SMDs, common mental disorders and uh, severe mental disorders, what are the difference? And this part of that, this is the first half of the title, uh, the topic of today's presentation. And this is of more of diagnostic significance to the doctors. You all know as families, we all know it doesn't matter to us CMD or SMD, it is some MD. That is the most important for all of us. With that Sam MD, we battle our lives. And therefore, to minimize the impact of the differences and the MDs, we have a second part. Because Face Me 
believes in family centric values we believe in family centric projects so we have a second part to it and the second part is what is the relevance of this difference between cmd and smd for families to interact and communicate with the pmis this is more important the significance of the diagnosis for communication is a very important part for pmis our esteemed speaker today is very well known as a family friendly psychiatrist he will touch upon both the aspects of the topic by highlighting the person the patient and the prescription the prescription here is for carers it's for the families we also come back with a prescription when we go to the doctor so he is going to highlight the person the patient and the prescription for the carers what prescription of course quote and quote and one more legal information which i like to add before i hand over the floor to sindhuja this both cmds or smds are officially and legally recognized as mental illness under the mental health care act 2017 this is a very important information for the families with this i hand over to you sindhuja please thank you thank you very much and sindhuja will take over thank you dr nirmala i would like to give a uh, brief introduction of our esteemed uh, speaker today it is uh, the volume has to increase in the okay ma'am little able to hear me now yes, yes. okay i would like to take this opportunity to uh, introduce our speaker for the day uh, dr virupaksha hs yeah, he is an associate professor of uh, the department of uh, psychiatry in ramaya medical college he is a consultant psychiatrist at the memorial hospital at ramaya he has been a consultant counselor with unifis of india and he is an external consultant uh, he has been uh, with the star health insurance and uh, external stress counselor uh, with the united nations and he is a consultant psychiatrist with the indian institute of science uh, recently uh, he has also taken up the position uh, of the head of the department at uh, ramaya congratulations sir uh i would also like to mention his uh areas of expertise that is clinical assessment and treatment of all psychiatric disorders psychotherapy crisis management communication and leadership and research and research guidance he has also won several awards and recognitions uh so here we have a person who has a lot of deep knowledge uh of the subject and uh, Uh, immense experience a lot of experience in the field so over to you dr virupaksha please uh, take it forward just a minute before dr sarth i would like to share the happy news that he has recently become a full professor professor okay. of psychiatry <laughs> and hod in ms ramaya college yes, yes that that and, is what uh, i mentioned okay, yes, yes okay. please over to you dr virupaksha yeah i think uh, thank you so much for that kind introduction uh, ms sindhuja and also i would like to thank uh, the whole group of uh, face me and specifically dr nirmala shrinivasan for uh, this is not the first time that i am with the face me group uh, it it is an it gives me an immense pleasure and also i would consider that as a privilege to be amongst you discussing a various important aspect and i am also mindful that a lot of times when it comes to uh, issues related to family and patients these things are something that we do not speak uh, in a mainstream fora so it also gives us some opportunity to discuss certain aspects uh, touch upon certain things and that is also one of the reason why i thought that today let's try to make it uh, completely interactive because i'm i'm sure that lot of times when when it comes to presentations or talks we 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 have a powerpoint we just talk about the powerpoint and then many a times we do not have enough time to do discuss about various things that people want to talk about so we will try to dedicate the full session uh, to interact and uh, probably discuss certain important aspects and also shed some light about the future directions uh, and certain plans that we have uh, because this is one area where lot of work needs to be done at the same time something that is taking its own uh, sweet time to develop as terms of a service delivery or in terms of the focus that psychiatrists or even hospitals have to focus upon so what i'll do initially is 
I'll try to probably just stimulate certain questions by touching upon, uh, I'm sure that because most of the people here are well versed with uh, mental health disorders or psychiatric disorders. So we would want to call it as psychiatric disorders. Again, there are lots of playing around with terminologies, uh, use of certain terminologies. So let's not get into that. So how, how does a psychiatric disorder uh, originate? And many, many, many years back, uh, decades back, people thought that psychiatric disorders are not even real disorders. And that is one of the reasons why the whole world was left behind because we did not actually seriously take psychiatric disorders as something serious. So we thought that, oh, they do not exist. They are just normal exaggeration and there is no treatment and there is no evidence. I think we have come a very, very long way from the time where we thought that it, they are just functional disorders where there is no evidence to a situation today where we know what are the receptors involved at the level of the brain um, at the molecular level that is a very very micro level what are the receptors involved with different disorders be it schizophrenia be it depression be it bipolar disorder be it anxiety disorder or be it even dementia so we know that certain psychiatric disorders are not just behavioral problems where you do not find anything to a situation where when we do a particular investigation, particular scans, uh, we can see differences at a much larger level. Again, are we able to use those things to individually diagnose patients? Not yet. But we know that there are evidences at the level of the brain there are certain physical changes that can lead into psychiatric disorders and certain psychiatric disorders can lead into uh, physical disorders. So in that sense, the relationship is bidirectional. Many a times, again, uh, if I take you all back to a few decades back, people thought that psychiatric disorders uh, do not have treatment. The only thing that could be done was probably keep them in a closed space. Let them not move around. Let them not interact they are not uh, allowed to do their routine activities. And we all know the tragic um, Erevadi tragedy that happened because of the fire where lots of people who were chained because of the mental illness, they had to lose their life. So in that sense, I would want to emphasize that we have come a long way where we are no more thinking that, okay, psychiatric disorders cannot be treated. Oh, all disorders are going to be lifelong to a situation where we have effective treatment to almost all psychiatric disorders. Just like how in any other medical specialty, be it uh, neurology, be it uh, uh, pathology, be it uh, uh, medicine, there are certain, some small subset of patients who might not respond. And that is where the tricky thing of uh, psychiatric disorders come in. What do we do to them? And that is also one of the important aspects that we are going to discuss today. When we talk about any psychiatric disorders, is it caused by one single component? Because many a times patients come to us and families come to us and say, in my family, two people had this problem. Is it because of that that th this person has the same problem? We have not reached a stage where we are going to say it is completely inherited because of the family presence. Family burden or family's presence of psychiatric disorder can only be one of the risk factor amongst so many other risk factors. So when we talk about it, it could be genetic risk factor. When we talk about it, it can be environmental risk factor. It could be substance use. It could be stress. It could be relationship. And many a times it could be of absolutely no reason. So many a times you find, you try to find, you will not find any reason. Doesn't mean that the person should not have any problem. It can also happen as the first time, what we call it as a de novo event. So one of the guilt that family goes through is, okay, did were we missing it? Did we delay it? 
or should we have done this should we have done that another important aspect the family also need to understand is if there is an event that has to happen there is a very minimum thing the family can do because many a times you do not anticipate it and that is also one of the reason why patients are treated after some time it might take few months to few years for family to realize that there is a problem and when they seek help it might not be ideal time and the reason why i am specifically talking about it is i have seen most of the family going through this feeling of guilt that could we have done better so the the probably the response to that is you have done the best that anyone could have done and in, in spite of all those things if there is a problem that means that that is something that could have anyway happened because you cannot go back in time and correct the course because one you do not anticipate and the second thing is there is a natural course for the illness and there are there are different types of treatment for it i will not get into it now so as the as the first probably pause i would want to open up the group where what do people think about psychiatric disorders and dr nirmala shrinivasan also spoke about uh, severe mental disorders or serious mental disorders and common mental disorders yes there are terminologies that are used at the level of the legality level of the administration but as a practicing psychiatrist in fact we would not worry whether something is a serious mental disorder or a common mental disorder because for us each and every mental disorder is of equal significance and equal importance i will also tell you why because many a times when we bring in this terminologies of serious mental disorders and common mental disorders somewhere we think that disorders which are not serious are probably not very serious so we are trying to do a discrimination here that okay there are certain disorders which are put under smds they are very important the cmds are not that important because anyway they do not cause damage but the the caution here is irrespective of whatever disorder that we might be dealing at each and every psychiatric disorders can be equally important can be equally critical which can actu actually make the patient debilitated if not treated properly so one of the common probably comparison that we can bring in is uh, a comparison between a person who has a schizophrenia versus a person who has an anxiety disorder imagine someone has a severe ang social anxiety and someone has a uh, schizophrenia so if we do not treat a patient with schizophrenia diagnosis the person continues to become dysfunctional he would not be able to do his day to day routine and he will continue to worsen similarly we think that oh if there is an anxiety disorder and we need to not treat it because it's a cmd it's a minor psychiatric disorder they will eventually become better no that is not the fact patients with anxiety disorder can also have chronic course sometimes to an extent where they are stuck at home they cannot go out uh, out of the house and they cannot do their routine activities which can actually impair their whole life so if the person cannot work person cannot uh, earn his uh, livelihood what is going to happen the outcome is going to be the same so in that sense i would want to personally bring this aspect that as a practicing psychiatrist i do not differentiate i take whether it's schizophrenia or whether it's a anxiety disorder or whether it's an ocd or it's uh, probably agoraphobia or it's it's any other personality disorder i take each and everything uh, equal seriously because the damage caused by irrespective of the intensity of your type of diagnosis the damage can be caused by both of these things the second aspect also uh, as a, as a student which i was told during my nimans training is most of the times the diagnostic guidelines are for us to make a diagnosis which are required predominantly for statistical purpose many a time when we make a diagnosis using a particular guideline 
our patients do not come as textbooks they come with multiple combinations permutations of various uh, symptoms so you cannot just have a rigid this thing saying that okay this is it this is what is going to happen in clinical practice in real life scenarios we see an entirely different trajectory we see an entirely different responses so in that sense i think that each and every disorder irrespective of the diagnosis it is equally important and the same emphasis has to be given for everyone yes there can be certain percentage changes just like how there can be variations there can also be percentage changes so i will stop here i would want to probably uh, listen to members what do they think of my thought what do they think of when i say e -e everyone can have uh, probably the same outcome if they are not treated properly and what do they do you do you have any questions regarding how do psychiatric disorders originate or what is the family's role in management of psychiatric disorders and then probably we'll go into the second part and the third part uh, here i would like to just uh, say this like you know to make it a little more uh, what, what do you say manageable uh, anybody who wants to uh, say kindly uh, unmute yourself and say that you're here but if everybody starts talking at the same time i think uh, nothing will be clear uh, so um, saraswati can they raise their hand and then you can unmute them for them to ask would that work yeah yeah that should work yeah okay please i request people who are no. interested in asking questions and talking uh, please raise your hand uh, saraswati will unmute you and then you can ask talk uh, to all of us uh, probably i think uh, people uh, can they can unmute themselves they can unmute themselves that will be easier sindhucha okay yes. yeah yes. okay but okay Fair there enough. is a question here if it says if treated similarly what is the average duration one minute can uh, the question one of the questions that has come in the chat box uh, i i okay i'll read the ones in the chat box at the at the end those who are interested in asking questions now can go ahead can i go ahead sir yeah i'm audible yes yes you're audible <laughs> sir thank you for the opportunity and uh, dr virubhasha there are very few speakers out of them i can really appreciate your brief and to the point uh, definition and come everything really super that's why it gave me courage to talk with <laughs> us secondly secondly see there are so many factors but as a caregiver plus i can say i was a pmi that pmi from it's a genetic one we started from the age of 16 which i went into my whole childhood and then as i was also like that only but that came into for uh, it was under the carpet it came when my son who is 41 year old his illness started or uh, came in the uh, came to you know 15 years back and that was i mean you, you can say 2007 and that 2007 there was not much facility i'm from, uh, from mumbai very few psychiatrists and these and that and we were also confused what to do and what is this and this and that so some of we could go through but that the period was very horrible now in this all matters genetic plus, plus personality also is very important now for me i can say mine is a common same thing like anxiety little bit schizoaffective but that was been managed or overcome because of my functionality i was a very hard hardcore sportsman this and that so that everything to getting a responsibility of my family also at the young age because my mother was also bipolar so that but then sons was very horrible we we, we were not knowing what is happening with that and that can become a severe one like the symptoms and then he was uh, given first as a schizophrenia then acd schizoaffective then bipolar comes uh, schizophrenia then in that phase he had a uh, drugs also so the drug induced psychosis so we were not knowing 
See, I never gave, gave importance for a label diagnosis. But my question was how to manage it. Because that is very important. See, I can't go the area which is not in my control or which is family. But how to take care of him? And that I started with a really some powerful intentions. And I focused and I gave my whole means focus on his. This, this journey, the, the, that care, and slowly, slowly understanding the uh, what should I do, attending such uh, groups like, later on. Yes. And, and that has helped me. But now I am telling that and during this also, now I have realized my illness now. See, my anxiety uh, that is taking over. As you rightly said, I should not uh, neglect that. Because I am doing it now, but that may go to certain action, and that I am, I am getting the uh, directions now that I have to stop somewhere, and now the time is such that that I can focus from my son to my that 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 time has come, and I have started working on that, and uh, about the diagnosis I am saying. See, when they do something, no, the symptoms become same, and we don't know whether the illness is there or otherwise the addiction. If, if, if this is the addiction, so because of the illness or because of the addiction or because of the personality, there are many factors. The same, no. So how to see CMD and SMD somewhere give you relief that CMD can be treated and can be. Uh, be successful as a uh, uh, functional level, but this SMD, it means it, people say the ratio of recovery this and then if he gets a proper treatment and also he uh, he accepts that he is into denial. But now his situation is such that he is saying this has happened because of drug induced psychosis. That is what he says. And he has given certain statements that now this, 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 if I do that, I'm going to get trapped. Otherwise, I'll be okay and I can... Yes, I can there are others also waiting. Yes. Yes. So, was, so now this area, if you CMD and SMD are told. So that as a caregiver, you see some future. Yes. You see some future, yes, you have yes, a hope. Yes. And then you don't give up. But if something is there where there is no uh, treatment, no uh, recovery, then... With Dr. Viripasha, yes, there is always hope. Suresh? Yes, yes. I can <laughs> say it with experience. Yes, with yes. Dr. Viripasha, there is only hope. I'm going to... Yes, yes. Uh, my so let, I just want, Sindhuja, a clarification from Dr. Vir Would you like to take all the questions, Doctor, or just answer one by one, please? So if, if there are if there are any other people who want to unmute, probably I'll uh, answer. Yes, there are a couple them. of more questions, Sinduja. Yeah, and then so there I are a few the questions chat. in the chat box, sir. Uh, I don't know if the uh, if anybody else wants to ask any question, kindly unmute yourself and ask. Sir would like to answer everything at the uh, at once uh, at one go later. Anybody else yes, wants to unmute and ask? Yes, Sinduja. Good afternoon. My name is Jaspal. Namaste, sir. Please go ahead. Namaste. Uh, namaste, Dr. Virupaksha. Uh, it's really wonderful session. Uh, I need to check one thing with you. I mean, the mental disorders and the mental illness, is it same or different? Okay. I think. Okay. A any other questions? Yeah. Uh, relating to that, I have a son who is having a schizophrenia uh, when he was 15. Now he is 40. So, uh, he has been uh, stable. He has been taking his medication and he's trying to engage for the last two years. Uh, but he is not doing any job. He is not earning. But he goes to an uh, NGO where he is trying to engage. Now, I have seen, I think, the medication which is given, he is taking almost same routine kind of a medicine for the last two years from uh, Spandana. And he's okay. 
Now I want to ask. I think in between, I have noticed whenever you know there is a variation in the temperatures, the weather changing. You know, like we move switch from winters to the extreme hot summer now. I think is it becoming mandatorily you know for the doctor to examine and adjust the medicines because we have seen you know from the behavioral changes and the patterns of the patient that you know he is undergoing some kind of a stressful period you know whenever there is a change in the weather conditions. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for those uh, questions. So I answer these two things uh, initially. Probably I'll uh, answer with uh, Jaspal sir's question first. I think one of the reason why there is a, a you know dif different terms of terminologies, mental illness and mental mental disorders are used. What we need to understand is medically, if we know a particular cause. Like I'll just give an example of tuberculosis. We know that tuberculosis is caused by tuber tubercular bacilli. Then it's called as a tuberculosis illness uh, or a disease, we call it as. Whereas in disorder, especially all psychiatric or mental health issues are called as disorders because one, we do not know the exact cause. There is no single cause. And number two, most of the psychiatric disorders are a collection of symptoms. So we technically, we call all psychiatric disorders as uh, disorders. We do not, as psychiatrists, we do not call it as illness. But illness is anything that makes you uh, not feel at ease. So it's a much more generic term. Specifically, we call schizophrenia disorder, bipolar affective disorder, anxiety disorder, so that is a personality disorder. That is what we call it as. So it, in, it is just a technicality. There is not much difference with it. The second aspect, which is something which is very, very important with the current context and where there is also a lot of uh, work that is being done is about climate change and mental health. We all know that depending upon the season, the way we, that we feel also uh, changes a lot because temperature humidity and air has a significant impact on upon, upon our brain health. So even probably one or two degree variation, one or two degree of change, you inhale less oxygen, you have more oxygen. It, it, it changes a lot the way that we behave. One simple example that I can give you is when patients get admitted to ICU because there is a change in the way that we, uh, that they have their day night, they do not sleep at night because the light is on, the sound is on all the time. They can actually develop what is called as ICU psychosis. That is not because there is a there is a psychosis in ICU. That is because the day-night cycle is disturbed in them. So similarly, uh, what you mentioned that the climate change, the, the temperature change influencing the mental health issues is something which is very, very real. And we also see a lot of times patients come with uh, certain um, excitement, uh, distress, irritability, frustration during the summer months. They come with certain depressive symptoms during the winter months, which is much more exaggerated in Scandinavian countries where there is absolutely no sunlight for many, many months, where they actually use what is called as uh, the, the light uh, uh, sources or light boxes which provide them light as though it is the daylight. So the light temperature has a significant impact on our mood, which is something that we are understanding more and more, especially in our country, because the day, day night cycle is something which is very, very clear. We don't see it, but we are seeing changes depending upon the temperature. Uh, coming to Suresh's question of the SMDs and CMDs, again, I would like to emphasize that irrespective of the type of disorder, we need to take everything as seriously as anything else. And yes, depending upon the severity, depending upon when a person seeks help. Imagine a person seeks help after five years after the onset of illness versus three days after the onset of illness. The trajectory is very, very different. A seeks help within few days always responds better. A person who seeks help a much, much later stage, they do not respond as good as person who is seeking help faster. So 
if you look at statistics, yes, schizophrenia, patient with schizophrenia uh, has a longer illness, has a much more uh, probably a guarded prognosis compared to anxiety disorder because anxiety disorders in terms of the intensity, they are a bit less. In terms of intensity, in terms of prognosis, schizophrenia is more higher. But that should not make us to take the CMDs less seriously. And that is the point that I am trying to make here. Every problem is equally important. Sometimes some disorders require much more attention, much more intensive uh, treatment, much more intensive work, both from the three groups. One is the patient. The second one is the doctors or the hospital. The third one is the family. The fourth one is the community. So all uh, four groups of people need to provide a bit more intensive support for people who have a much more severe illness or probably who have an illness which doesn't respond to treatment uh, as better as some other problems. So there are various degrees of intensity various degrees of uh, illnesses. So that is something that can be discussed with your psychiatrist or with the person that you are seeing. Because one of the important uh, role of a psychiatrist and a psychologist is not just to diagnose. We also have a role in looking at the past and also providing you the prognosis, whether a patient has a good prognosis, whether the patient has not so good prognosis, what are the different strategies? What is the role of the family and what is the role of the patient? So if we are able to take each and every person who has a psychiatric disorder to the treatment as early as possible, the amount of dysfunction, the amount of complication can be significantly lower. But unfortunately, in our society, the awareness, including in, uh, I want to bring it on record, including our own healthcare professionals is very, very less. So many a times when a patient goes with certain psychiatric disorder to other specialities, they might not be able to diagnose them and we miss out on that. And that is one of the things that we all have to strive to work towards it. We have made a, a big stride, but over a period of time, I only think that things can only become better. Uh, so I hope I have answered those questions. So I'll take a few questions which are there in the uh, chat. And then if there are any follow-up questions, we will take it uh, at, from there. So uh, Mr. Gajanan has asked this question. If treated similarly, what is average duration of recovery for CMD and SMD? Even though I said that every psychiatric disorder is equally important as a clinician for me, every patient is also unique for me. So we cannot treat every patient the same way. Just like how if there are seven and a half billion people in this world, there are seven and a half billion personalities, you will never a person who is like you 100%. So each and every patient, even with the same diagnosis, is very, very different. For example, if there are 10 schizophrenia patients, those 10 patients are very, very different. Not everyone will respond to Risperidone. Not everyone will respond to Quetiapine. So in that sense, the question here is, can we treat them similarly? No, we cannot treat them similarly. So in that sense, the outcome might also be different. It is how clearly we are able to communicate, how early we are able to diagnose and how effectively we are able to treat the patient. In that case, the response will also be much more better. I cannot give the percentage because they are very, very variable. Uh, the second one is, okay, the distinction of CMD and SMD has always made me uncomfortable. I do not have a question, hence not raising. I, I, I agree with this. So probably as a legal term, there might be a differentiation. Uh, like I mentioned multiple times, for me, each and every psychiatric disorder, each and every patient is equally important irrespective of the diagnosis. Uh, then we have for Guru Prasad as asked for persons with anxiety or depression, do they get UDID card? Please ask the question on my behalf. I think this is something which is a which is an administrative question. I'll not get into it. I will I will ask the clinic. I will answer the clinical questions, and then probably if there is a time, we will get into UDID and other benefits. Uh, uh, 
Okay, I would like to know, Ritu Sharma has asked, I would like to know that psychiatric medicines taken for mild disorders like anxiety and sleeplessness, will it have an adverse effect on the mind in the long, long run? Uh, again, this is one of the common questions a lot of people ask us. When we take psychiatric medication, one, will it impact our organs? One of the common questions is, oh, will it affect my kidney? Will it affect my liver? What will happen to me? I also want to bring uh, to everyone's uh, attention that almost all psychiatric drugs that we use with uh, you know determining the patient's profile and everything, they are quite safe. And we also monitor for the side effects. And on a long run, they do not have any negative impact on the mind. Like, for example, one of the common this thing is I'm becoming slow, I'm sleeping more. That is as part of the side effect. So when you go back and tell your psychiatrist that this is the side effect that I'm having, there are multiple other options that can be tried so that a medication with a much lower side effect can be used. Why am I saying that much lower side effect? Why am I not saying that a medication with no side effect will be used? Because there is no medication with no side effect. So if you want a medication which has an effect, you will definitely have that medication which will also have a side effect. So depending upon the patient profile, the side effect might be very, very minimum or might not be seen. But I will definitely not say that there is no medication with, there is medication with zero side effect because all medications have their own side effect. Sometimes as psychiatrists, we use certain medications with certain side effect as an advantage. Like for example, if the patient has to sleep well, I might choose a medication which has a side effect of some amount of drowsiness so that apart from the illness treatment, I also use a side effect to make the patient sleep better. So like that, we use certain side effects as an advantage, but please do not ask for a medication which has zero side effect. If you want a medication with zero side effect, you will definitely get a medication with zero effect. So that is that is not going to happen. <laughs> On a long term, all these medications are tested for a really long time. They do not have any negative impact on the mind on a long run. But we should also go for regular follow-ups so that the psychiatrist can taper and stop the medication and doesn't continue the medication beyond what is necessary. Sometimes, uh, again, patients come to us and say, I'm doing very fine. I'm anxious to stop the medication. Even when we say we have to stop the medication, they do not want to stop. You don't have to do it because beyond a particular degree, if you continue the medication, they're not going to be extra beneficial. And if a normal patient normal takes the medication, nothing will happen to them. So if a normal person takes an antidepressant, they're not going to be more happy. So there is no point in continuing medication, which is not needed. And also a follow-up question is as that is why many people don't take the medicine also because they make one feel drowsy and would like to know how strong these medications are. I think I have answered this question. So the next one is uh, by uh, Q6. In my experience, I have seen multiple diagnoses for the same patient, PD, case, anxiety. Finally, I guess treatment is what is important. Diagnosis is not. But when a question is raised, what is the diagnosis? What does one state? Why not call all MI as neurochemical imbalancer? A very interesting question. I would probably uh, uh, disagree here. Diagnosis is very, very important. D why diagnosis is important is diagnosis determines the treatment. Imagine that I make four diagnoses. I need to treat all four disorders. If I make four diagnoses and I treat one, one, I am not ethical. Number two, I am missing out on three different diagnoses. As far as possible, again, this is something that we teach as part of the teaching. As far as possible, we tend to make as much minimum diagnosis as possible, which can explain all the symptoms. Like I said, psychiatric disorders are a collection of symptoms. Most of the symptoms can be explained by one single disorder or two single disorders. Sometimes we make multiple diagnoses because it cannot be explained by one or two diagnoses. And that is why it is very important. And diagnosis is always important because that is what determines the treatment. And why shouldn't we call all 
mental illnesses as neurochemical imbalance that is the underlying pathology again like i said we can call all diabetes as increased sugar disorder but yes increased sugar disorder can happen but we also know there are different types of diabetes so the reason why it is important to differentiate classify psychiatric disorders is treatment is also different i cannot treat a patient with schizophrenia which who has a neurochemical imbalance the same way how i treat a person with anxiety who also has a neurochemical imbalance so neurochemical imbalance is there with everyone but what neurochemical imbalance is there is determined by the diagnosis which determines the treatment so that is the reason why we cannot call all mental illnesses as neurochemical imbalance i hope i have answered that question so i'll skip there are few more messages so i will uh, jump into it because there is only probably 10 minutes uh, in schizophrenia remains the same throughout person's life or the mental disorder type changes for schizophrenia during the course of person's life is depression can be cured if the person has schizophrenia if has how again a very important question in psychiatry most of the times what we follow is called as a lifetime diagnosis if a person has a schizophrenia we continue to keep in our mind that this person had schizophrenia at some point in time the reason for that is there can be a relapse or there can be a recurrence even though the person has no recurrence for 20 years or 30 years we always keep that in mind and we do not treat it if the person doesn't have an active symptoms we don't have to treat that number 2 in psychiatry we do not use the word cure cure is actually a very misnomer cure is a term that we use when you treat and it doesn't recur so most of the psychiatric disorders can also recur and that is the reason why we use the word treatment and we also emphasize the treatment needs to continue so that we need to prevent relapses and we also need to prevent prevent worsening of symptoms so depression is different schizophrenia is different and again depending upon the type of illness depending upon when do we uh, treat it their response can also be significantly different i have many patients who had schizophrenia first episode where we have treated we have, we have stopped treatment and they are doing fine at the same time i also have patients where we thought initially it's a very mild schizophrenia go on to develop treatment resistant where they have not responded to treatment so in that sense each and every patient is very very different like i have emphasized a uh, few minutes before so uh, the next question is is the chemical imbalance theory of mental illness established and what is the view on psychiatric medicines is it possible that sometimes the medicines don't work because they are addressing certain neurotransmitters that are not yet established as the reason for illness so there are three questions here is the chemical imbalance theory established yes it is well established beyond doubt there is a lot of evidence in fact if you search any scientific articles there are a lot of evidence uh, for it and that is also the reason why if a person has anxiety we use a particular molecule which works on a particular receptor become better and that is an again an indirect evidence that chemical imbalance is being corrected some medicines don't work because the patient might not be responding to that medication just like how there are hundreds of anti diabetic medication hundreds of anti uh, hypertensive medication not everyone is on the same medication because your response are different because depending upon the genetics depending upon when we start etc etc so when a particular medicine doesn't work doesn't mean that the patient will not respond the patient is not responding to that medication so when we change it there can be a response uh, i'll take the next question lot of people with the onset do not start treatment with the concept that the medicine dulls the patient what's your view i strongly am against it if there is a symptom please go and get evaluated and please start treatment as soon as possible if a person is dull if a person becomes drowsy person is sleeping more that is because of the side effect of the medication not because of anything else like i said there are various options 
to handle that problem, which can be discussed with the psychiatrist and appropriate action can be taken. Uh, the next question is, does learning stress handling skills in day-to-day -day task help prevent a relapse? I second this. Because stress is one of the very common factor for many of the psychiatric disorders in two ways. One, stress can cause psychiatric disorders like anxiety and depression. Stress can worsen certain disorders like schizophrenia, bipolar disorder. So stress has a role in almost all psychiatric disorders. So if you are able to handle stress in a better way, the prognosis is better. Sometimes the relapse might not even happen. So in that sense, I would say that stress handling skills and therapy is something which is very, very important to almost all psychiatric disorders. So if a psychiatrist says, please go for therapy, please go for therapy. Do not say, oh, I do not want therapy. It is not important. I know the skills. I can manage. I am a strong person. Therapy is not advised because we want to make you strong. Therapy is advised because we want you to learn certain skills. So in that sense, stress management skills are very, very important. I will get into the next question. Uh, can we classify services like monitoring, reporting, rehabilitation, reparation, pre prevention? This can be useful for collaboration in advanced directives, nominated representatives, etc. I think that this is only a technicality. For us, when we treat and evaluate, all these things are considered. So these are not separate things. These are something that we consider irrespective of uh, whoever that we are dealing with. Can we have aspects on which different bodies to come on same page for efficient cooperation, government bodies, schools, etc.? Again, this is a uh, technical question. I will not get into it because there are certain clinical questions. This can be answered uh, in probably a, in a different uh, fora. There is another question. Uh, persons with maintenance dose who are almost functional have no insight of financial aspects. They spend money like anything. Uh, is it one of the symptoms? If so, medicines to be modified. Uh, patients who are on maintenance dose means symptoms are not severe enough. Doesn't mean the symptoms are zero they can continue to have no insight. And if there are any fluctuations in the behavior, which is not as part of their normal personality, then that means that that needs to be treated. So if you find any symptom, even during the maintenance phase of treatment, we need to make certain changes in the treatment because fluctuation is a norm in almost all psychiatric disorders. So in that sense, take it seriously, discuss it, and handle it. Uh, okay, so I think there are these are the there is one last question for persons with uh, schizophrenia. Medicines are to be taken lifelong. Uh, see, all schizophrenia patients don't have to be treated lifelong. There are, uh, in fact, even in the classification, there are first episode uh, schizophrenia or one episode schizophrenia, multi episodic schizophrenia, and there are chronic uh, core schizophrenia. So in that sense, each and every patient is different. Some people might have to take longer. Some people might have to take throughout their life. Not everyone has to take throughout their life. And that would be the response that I would give. Not every patient who has been diagnosed with schizophrenia have to take the treatment lifelong. So some of them have to take. That is all case by case. Uh, I would not be able to tell how many of them have to require. Generally, we follow what is called as a rule of third. One third of the patient respond very well to treatment. One third of the patient might continue to worsen. One third of the patients respond well and they maintain well on uh, treatment. So, yeah, there is one probably last question we will take. Currently, my daughter is treated for obsessions, epilepsy, chrono, and venlafaxin for past me. She's still having severe obsession and high anxiety, not able to sit at home. Please advise. I would definitely suggest because when we do not know the clinical details as well as the dose of it, it is very important to understand that not just the medication, the dose is important, the time is important, the combination is also important. 
so uh, if if there are any persisting symptoms it is important to have a discussion and then probably take it ahead because some minor variations in symptoms will definitely help for a better response uh, what i would also probably probably take a minute or two and just uh, say few certain things is one early treatment is very important family plays a significant role in management and including relapse so family support is very very important especially if we call it as expressed emotions having those expressed emotions which are positive providing adequate support for treatment follow up and including rehabilitation is very very important and i am also emphasizing that doctors or healthcare professionals also become a stakeholders in the response and the outcome of the patient and uh, th there are there are lots of uh, efforts being made including uh, we, we are trying to bring in uh, home care we are trying to bring in um, online support services which can be helpful for people to seek support uh, because there are logistical difficulties that are coming more and more people are seeking help for psychiatric disorders which is a very good thing that is just a tip of the iceberg at the same time not everyone who have psychiatric disorders are seeking support and help so can we provide that support at their home yes there are logistical issues there are legal issues there are consent related issues and all those things are there and when we all come together i think that is also something that can become much much easier so there are efforts to work on those things uh, which probably over a period of time at 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 a at a later date we can uh, get an update about it so um, if if there are uh, any questions and follow up i know that the time is up so if there are a few things we can discuss i'm i'm more than happy to stay back uh, so one of the things i would like to ask sir is that um... When we were talking about this topic, and when we, when Dr. Nirmala uh, introduced us to this, and we were discussing, uh, we were talking about the communication based on uh, the symptoms or how the person is uh, functioning. Uh, so, how I think the relevance of uh, the person's uh, diagnosis, whether it is a severe mental disorder or a common mental disorder. So, how to uh, the families? Uh, how are they? Um, you know. Uh, what do you guide it uh, by the psychiatrist or uh, how do they how do the families understand as to how should they understand the symptoms and how to communicate with the pmi which is very important on a day to day basis yeah i think one of the important aspect is whether we have confirmed the diagnosis the second important thing is uh, most of the times what we do is we try to blame the person who has a problem as either okay he got a problem because of something else or he or she is not doing enough or he or she is not responding so the important aspect is this is something which is under no one's control so that empathy is something that we see generally missing if at all you are able to understand and also communicate to the person that it is not his or her mistake to have gotten into the problem and we understand it we support it and we are there with them 50% of the emotional reaction 50% of the you know the other non treatment related problems will come down most of the times patients feel that they have been targeted especially something called as a negative expressed emotions and uh, irrespective of the diagnosis if we are able to keep the patient on board by explaining to them we call it as insight facilitation that is a significant step and family becomes a very very important part of it so when we understand the diagnosis like i said it is not the family's responsibility primarily it is the psychiatrist's responsibility to complete the diagnosis what the family has to do and secondarily it is the family's responsibility to make sure that whatever the psychiatrist has told is implemented at the level of the family and communicate to everyone because what we also see is there is one or two people in the family who understand the illness and rest of them company continue to demonize the patient continue to target the patient continue to say he is acting she is acting there is no problem they are fine those things 
so just providing that emotional atmosphere emotional support will solve most of the problem and which will also help the patient develop insight because they are not treated unfairly and they are not targeted for something that they are not the cause of and also i think this should be some kind of a uh, communication between the families and the psychiatrist also to uh, be able to understand because sometimes it is not possible um, practically speaking many a times the inputs that we get from the doctors is uh, we understand it but to put it into practice is very difficult once the incident has already happened after that we are like okay i shouldn't have said this i shouldn't have uh, you know told him this because i already doctor told me that i should not be talking like this to him but then it takes a lot of practice a lot of time and lot a lot of uh, what do you say uh, self analysis on part of the members that we go to be able to deal with uh, this thing and this is a, uh, i think we have also grown uh, in our journey uh, along with the uh, the person who's actually suffering from the illness no i th- i think i think it's a journey for everyone including the psychiatrist i i definitely feel that over a period of time compared to my first year practice uh, now i am a much better psychiatrist the way i know what <laughs> what is something that will trigger my patient what is something that will trigger my family so it's a growth for everyone we all do mistakes but i think we should not uh, get rigid in terms of okay i have done a mistake i i should not accept it so i always tell with my non mental health colleagues that my patients are the most well behaved patients so you see that in in hospitals there are, there will be ruckus there will be fights and you don't see that these ruckus are made by psychiatric patients these are all made by other patients so we should not forget that yes the patients might have a problem but they also have a thinking capacity they also have emotions they also have understanding so we can always go back and say that i am sorry i said this we should not have done it or we should not have said it so go back and do it just like how we would do we do with anyone else and they will accept it and they will actually be glad and this is one of the common complaint that we have with patients that patients i i to as much as possible many a times uh, especially in the initial stage, stages i tend to spend few minutes alone with the patient they always say they are not understanding me they are not talking to me i think spending time is the single most important factor as a prognosis thank you doctor you need 2 minutes for a question yes doctor yes, can yes, time. yes doctor narvanilla please go ahead yeah one is i want to know quickly if you can sum up what exactly when word family pathology means many times it's misunderstood many family members also need a diagnosis is that the right interpretation of family pathology have we come across such situations where if i can use the word one person in the family gets victimized and then the others go scot free and this person is helpless they can't us have you come across this is very important for all of us family members to do the screening as suresh said now he realizes his his treatment is also very important that's a very uh, admirable thing and at this age suresh is accepting and saying it is very great but have you come across that is one thing secondly do the ang- uh, smds that is whatever you said you don't differentiate between the two disorders is disorder but in terms of long term care which is one of the top most concerns for the family members do cmds need as much care in the long term future can they manage on their own there is a myth among many ngos that smds can't manage cmds can manage can you respond to this please okay uh, the 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 first question is family pathology one of the reason why we use that word family pathology is if there are any other problems apart from the psychiatric disorder that we have diagnosed in the family that needs to be taken care of like i already mentioned if there is an negative expressed emotions or if there is any interaction issues or if there is anything that is influencing the prognosis of my patient probably i will use family pathology the reason for that is we feel that it is equally important to address families issues also 
because directly and indirectly that has an impact on the prognosis of my patient. So we use that because we feel that family is very, very important. If there are certain minor issues, it's fine. If there are major issues, the other people might require treatment, the other people might require uh, counseling or therapy. It might be beneficial by using uh, family therapy, those things. So family pathology is used in that in a very generic term. It is not a very, very specific term. The second one is do on a long term who require more support, SMDs or CMDs. Like I said, CMDs respond better to treatment in a much larger percentage compared to SMDs. So most of the SMDs require a longer treatment, much more intense treatment and the percentage of people who might require much more intense and long-term treatment are more in SMDs compared to CMDs. But again, I would be very, very particular in saying that we should not think that all CMDs respond better. Some of them might require equal or more support than some of the SMDs. So in that sense, percentage-wise, there is a difference. Uh, but it depends upon individual case basis. And that is also the reason why probably the government felt that people with SMDs require much higher support because the percentage in that group is higher. Thank you, doctor. Yes. Is so, uh, no, there are no more questions in the chat box also. Uh, I, there is just one which says, long time taking of antipsychotics can cause a drop in sodium levels. Is it true? Just one last question, sir. Uh, it, some medications, not antipsychotics, Antidepressants can lead to drop in sodium levels, especially in, in elderly patients and who have other physical problems. Uh, a group of medication called as SSRIs. Uh, you might all have heard about a medication by name acetylopram, uh, fluoxetine. Some of these medications can cause drop in sodium levels in some patients. So that is also the reason why when we prescribe these medications, we tell them to get it tested or tell them to reach out to us if there is any problem. Uh, so the side effects, the side effects are very, very drug specific, diagnosis specific, patient specific. So each and every patient can have a different side effect, which the psychiatrist will monitor. And there are hundreds of side effects of medication, just like how there are thousands of benefits of uh, medication. So compared to the advantage, disadvantage is very, very less. Let's not get lost with the side effect because side effects are like known devils. We know how to deal with them. It is the effect which are unknown devils because we don't know to what extent the patient might worsen, to what extent patient might require support. So if someone has a side effect, I am not panicking because I know how to deal with the side effect. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, excuse me. For, for Suresh. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, Doctor, now the medical science has progressed such a way that there is no test for the, for the psychiatry, this one. There is no, what, sir? I, I do not hear you. Like pathology for cancer, there are tests for other, yes. there is a test. But the, so AI has come up now, article in. But then why? There is no research happening at that level, which is the most critical one we are going through. Uh, I, I, wonderful question, sir. In fact, that is the reason why I am proud to be a psychiatrist. I will answer that in a different <laughs> uh, Imagine that you are happy. Hmm. Can you tell me how much percentage are you happy now? <laughs> that is not measurable that way. Right. So, mind is not a measurable concept. So it is predominantly qualitative. So quality cannot be measured. You can say good. You can say bad. I, you can say I'm happy. Mm -hmm. I'm sad. You cannot say I am 59.2% happy today. Yeah. Just like how you can say my glucose level is 125.5 milligram per deciliter. So physical disorders have quantity. Psychological disorders uh have no quantity, they have quality and that is also the reason 
why probably few decades down the line we might have a test but at this point in time nowhere in the world we have a test where we can ask the patient to get a test and say patient has depression patient has anxiety so at this point in time uh, it is quite challenging and that is also the reason why i said i am proud to be a psychiatrist because we do thing which are not recognized by a blood test or a simple brain scan or uh, probably an ultrasound but we say chemical imbalance right so there somewhere we mentioned that four chemicals and there is an imbalance that we say correct no, no. chemical imbalance is a different thing yeah. whether we are able to quantify chemical imbalance say if the chemical imbalance is more than a particular level this is the disorder Hmm. we are not at that level yeah but then add to this i will say and it's a compliment to you also because i have seen south indian uh, psychiatrist and uh, our maharashtra see the one good thing which is missing even i have attended two three nimans conferences of the, what is missing in psych- psychiatrist is empathy when they treat the student or patient that empathy as we have seen here empathy is real missing and empathy can work like a Miracle, am I right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. That empathy is really very important. So, thank you, Sudesh. Yeah, there is one uh, one question in the because this is something which is important. I'll answer this. Yes, this dopamine and serotonin test again. I have never prescribed dopamine and serotonin test. Some people uh, there is a disclosure. Sometimes some people prescribe dopamine and serotonin test to j- tell you that oh there is a dopamine reduction or a serotonin reduction. again as of now psychiatric diagnosis and treatment is clinical and we base our diagnosis and uh, all those things on clinic so if someone has low serotonin and has no depressive symptoms i cannot put them on a treatment so it should be a clinical diagnosis there can be an additional uh, certain things but again this is not something mainstream and uh, most of the psychiatrists do not follow this okay thank you i think we will uh uh that 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 would be the last question that sir is dealing with today uh so thank you for being here with us sir i would like to call upon sumit uh, to give the vote of thanks sumit ji yeah namaste go ahead sir hi thank you very much dr virupaksha for an excellent uh, session uh, interactive and interesting and definitely educative and thank you uh, nirmala ma'am for organizing this and getting dr virupaksha on board and thank you sindhu ji and saraswati for uh, getting the technology working on this uh, mm-hmm. team thanks a lot thank you sumit thanks to all the members over here uh, we now on the uh, screen i think everybody is able to see the contact details uh, these are the numbers of the different regions where face me is functioning so kindly make note of it you could take a free screenshot and uh, save these numbers uh, you can call any of us wherever uh, you are placed uh, for any uh, information thank you so much um, i would now like to uh, administer the face me pledge uh saraswati if you could display that and everyone can uh, please be on mute you can repeat after me i will go slow the face me pledge we we the members of families alliance on mental illness pledge to support one another and other families in similar situations and use language which conveys love and respect towards each other and especially towards pmi we shall strive to protect and promote the rights of pmi as enshrined in the laws of the land on this day we take this pledge to work 
towards the vision and mission of Face Me India. Thank you, everyone, Thank you for being much. here today. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Virupaksha. Thank you, Dr. Virupaksha. Thank you, everyone. Please take care.